Hi, this is Deborah. Sounds like Freedom Test. I'm here today with Patrick Gioba. Patrick Gioba is the author of The Freedom Experience, a practical guide to emotional healing and deliverance. He speaks on various Christian topics that inspire many to know God, love others, discover purpose, and find freedom. He currently serves on the pastoral team at the City Light International Church, where he's the assistant director of small groups and a co-host of Sunday services. Pat Patrick is a certified and trained minister by Global Awakening College of Ministry and holds a master's degree from Northeastern Illinois University. Patrick was born in Dallas, Texas, but grew up in Nigeria, so he brings a diverse and international perspective to any conversation. He currently resides in Illinois and is married to the love of his life, Liz. They are blessed with three amazing children, Timothy, Tiara, and Tiffany. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much for, for having me on your podcast. It's such a privilege to be here. And I thank you so much for the opportunity. Of course, welcome. I'm excited to have you and to hear your story and hear about your work. So you were born in Dallas, but grew up in Nigeria. Yeah. And then, are you still in Nigeria or you live in Illinois now? Correct. Currently, uh, I live in Illinois. Um, I've been there for so long. In fact, um, I came back here. So funny story. It's funny story. Like I was actually, I was born in Texas. I was two years old when my parents took me back to Nigeria. So I grew up in Nigeria. I was there for about 16, 17 years until I was 18 years old. And I came back and, you know, I decided to go to college and you know, get my master's in Illinois. So I've been here for about 20, 23, 24 years now. Back to uh, Illinois. Um, currently, I, I, I decided not to go to Texas. Um, I have no reason why. I guess because most, most of my friends and family members are here in Illinois. So that's why I decided to just come to Illinois. So, so yeah, so an interesting story, right? <laughs> yeah, an interesting perspective living in the South, you know, the Southern Middle United States over to Africa and then more in the Northern United States there's quite a bit of cultural difference between all three of those locations. I mean, obviously, you don't really probably remember Texas too much. Uh, no, I don't actually. Yeah. Talk a little bit about <laughs> the difference between like what your experience in the culture was like in Nigeria, and then bringing that back to the United States, and how how um, that has correct. Impacted yeah. You. So it was it was definitely a cultural change. Um, a lot of things are done differently in Nigeria. Um, I, I didn't know much when I was two, obviously, when I was in the United States. So every, every part of me, even though I was born in Texas, every part of me is Nigerian. Um, you know, my culture, everything I know is Nigerian. So um, obviously, culture is, the culture is different. Every, the language, obviously, is different. The culture is different. Uh, and most of the things are different. Um, so I, I actually learned the language over there in addition to, in addition to English. And uh, but most of the things are different. So also now coming back to the United States was also a big cultural change for me uh, because so many things were being done differently. But again, that was 23, 23 years ago. So I think by now I'm assimilated into the culture of the United States. So in fact, the funny thing is now if I go back to Nigeria, being here for 24 years, it's also going to be another cultural change because I've not been back there in 20, 23 years. So if I was to go back there now, I'm sure I have to learn so many things all over again because things have changed since the last time I was there. So um, is it is a constant learning <laughs> learning opportunity for me no matter where I go. So absolutely, and you work. It seems like you work a lot with people and working with healing and inner healing right. and freedom. So that I bet brings such an interesting, unique um, perspective when you're working with people and from people with different backgrounds and different cultural mm -hmm. experiences, having two very complete different cultures in your own background. Correct. Awesome. Yeah, that's so true because, um, you know, when you're looking at things of spiritual issues, spiritual warfare, um, the kind of issues they have in Nigeria is quite different from the kind of issues they have in the United States. So understanding people, understanding culture, understanding backgrounds and understanding the way things are done in a particular culture helps you better position to help people be free, uh, which is what I actually do. I help people be free. Um, as you mentioned in my bio, 
I am certified and trained by Global Awakening College of Business. So when you meet someone for the first time, you need to understand their, their background. You can just, you know, the solution for A is quite different for solutions for B. There's so many things goes into finding freedom. And when I say freedom, I mean permanent freedom. It's not a situation where you're free today and you know, six months from now, you're bound, bound by the same problems. No, I'm talking about permanent solutions to your problems. And for you to attain permanent freedom, you need to go deeper. You need to go back, <laughs> you know, because we all come from somewhere, you know. You, know you, you need to look into your history. You need to look into your background, your parents, your forefathers. You know, you need to, your experiences as, as a child, you just need to go into, you need to go back, is what I tell people. You need to go back. I just don't assume solution is the same for everybody. Everyone is different from different backgrounds. So for me, when I come into people's lives and they ask for my help, I ask a lot of questions because I think that's key to helping them gain permanent freedom because I look for permanent freedom not something that they will gain permanent, they will, they will gain freedom a few months and then we're back to the same problem. No, I mean, that's okay, but I, I tend to look for permanent solutions. And in my quest for permanent solutions, I ask, and I ask a lot of questions, so. I think that's awesome. I mean, the whole you know theme of this podcast is living in God's source freedom and Correct. finding freedom in our lives, which I, in my experience has always started in the mind. Mm -hmm. you know? finding those lies and aligning them with God's truth. Do you have any strategies that you can give our listeners um, about taking our mindsets and aligning them with God's truth? Correct. Yeah. So like, um, and I was going to mention that, like, you know, in my book, uh, Freedom Experience, um, I have five steps to spiritual freedom. I call them five steps. And in my book, one of the first thing I mentioned is the power of the Holy Spirit. I personally believe our freedom journey is important when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is important to our freedom journey, no matter where you're from, no matter what part of the country, part of the, the nation or part of the continent or part of the world you are from, I think the Holy Spirit is a key guide in our permanent freedom journey. So for me, the first thing I mentioned in my book is, it is a collaboration between the reader and the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit begins to reveal areas in their lives they need freedom in. For me personally, I didn't know I needed freedom in some areas of my life until the Holy Spirit began to reveal uh, those areas to me. So step number one is to understand that it is a collaboration between the reader and the Holy Spirit. Now, people will start asking the question, okay, how do I know I'm being led by the Holy Spirit? Like, but the Holy Spirit can use something as simple as a dream to reveal areas in your life. It can use inward expressions like thoughts that it just begins to generate in your mind. So there's so many ways in which the Holy Spirit can reveal these things to you. you just be, just be, you need to be aware and you need to understand that it is a collaboration between you, the reader, or in my case, the reader and the Holy Spirit. Number two, I also mentioned something else in my book, doing a root cause analysis of your problem. I mentioned something earlier, a solution recommended for A might totally be different for a solution recommended for B. And so, so you can have the same solution recommended for everybody. And that's why it's important to do a root cause analysis. A root cause analysis of your problem ensure that you know the root cause of your problem. So number one, collaboration with the Holy Spirit. Number two, doing a thorough root cause analysis on the issue. And that brings us to number three. It reveals, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal the root cause of your problem. So for example, if a particular person is suffering from a sickness, for example, again, this is just an example. And it starts, the person starts to collaborate with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, after doing this root cause analysis, the Holy Spirit might begin to reveal that, okay, dude, there was, there, there was somebody that offended you, offended you five years ago. You never forgive that person because what they did, the offense was so awful that you can't forgive them. But unfortunately, the root cause of all the issues you're having, the root cause of the sickness is unforgiveness. 
Now, this particular person might have prayed, fasted, read the Bible on, on, on healing and so many things, but there's still a key function that he is supposed to do, which is forgiveness. So number three, the, the Holy Spirit reveals the root cause. Number four, the Holy Spirit reveals the solution. So in this particular case, the solution is forgiveness. The individual need to find it in their heart to forgive this person. I know it's it maybe the hardest thing they've had to do because in some cases it's definitely so hard. We have to be real. We can be fake. We have to be real. In some cases, it's extremely hard to forgive depending on the offense, right? So before the Holy Spirit reveals the solution here, the only solution here is forgiveness because the root cause of the problem can be linked to unforgiveness. And number five is to apply the recommended solution by the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit in this instance is recommending forgiveness. You have to, in this particular case, find it in your heart to forgive. And you realize in that moment when this individual forgives, they just have to position themselves to now readily receive God, God's healing power. But unfortunately, up till then, they've positioned themselves in a place where they cannot readily receive God's healing power. So in, the, in this case, it's a five steps to spiritual freedom. And believe me, it's work wonders in my life. When the Holy Spirit started working on me, this was the same five steps I followed. And I just began seeing freedom in so many areas of my life. You can even apply the issues to un ungodly strongholds. You know, like you mentioned earlier, you know, a particular individual may have believed so many lies for so long. And maybe when they do their root cause analysis, the Holy Spirit began to reveal, hey, there are some ungodly strongholds in your mind that you need to begin to tear down. So for, for that particular individual, the solution is to walk on those ungodly strongholds, you know, maybe find the word of God, begin to tear down those ungodly strongholds and begin to apply the word of God to those strongholds so that a godly, a godly stronghold can be built in their mind. So for me, those five steps, as they've worked wonders in my life and I always recommend it to uh, some of the people I help currently. So. I love it. I love how uh, they're so, um, it's a great framework that anybody can use for any issue that they're repeatedly struggling with. I mean, there are times that, you know, it's just uh, a, not a, a sickness or an illness, mm -hmm. or injury that we can seek the Lord for healing yeah. from. But you're right. Sometimes there is something deeper. Sometimes mm -hmm. there is to like unforgiveness. I think that one, you hit that on the head. A lot of times I think, people wind up being held in bondage mentally, emotionally, even physically mm -hmm. because of unforgiveness and picking up offense. Um, I know my dad had prayed for, he went on a mission trip to Russia mm -hmm. when I was a kid and he prayed for a woman who came forward and she had rheumatoid arthritis all over and she was crippled, totally crippled. Mm -hmm. No, how long have you had uh, this arthritis? And she mentioned how many years it was. It was a long time. And the Holy Spirit just told my dad, ask about, you know, unforgiveness. Mm. And he did. And she said, Oh, that's, you know, this is, it happened right after my husband left me. Mm. I never forgave her husband. And my mm. dad said, you know, God's saying you need to forgive him. Not that he did was right. Mm -hmm. You need to forgive him to find healing and to find freedom. And she did. And she was healed instantly. Mm. It's just amazing. The power of yeah. following the Holy Spirit's voice, you know, living with clear hearts um, and the power that that can bring to our lives. Cause sometimes we don't even realize the weight of what we're carrying. Into exactly. Exactly. And yeah. And ex exactly like what I, I was mentioning earlier, like in some of those cases, in my, in my case, I had no clue. I needed, I, I didn't even know I needed freedom in those areas. I didn't know. And the Holy Spirit began to reveal that, Hey dude, yes, you do. And do this, do that. In some cases you need to forgive some people. In some cases, you need to, in my case, it was a combination of so many things. I had to forgive. I had to, you know, begin to tear down some ungodly strongholds, some lies I, I believe for, for so long. I had to begin to tear them down. So many things I had to do. And that's why I said 
a solution recommended for A might not necessarily work for B, might not necessarily work for anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's why you need to re recognize that your situation is different. Again, it ties back to background that we talked we talked about. You know, knowing sometimes you may need to dig further and know your background, your parents, your forefathers. You know, and and it gets deeper than that. So in some cases, you, and that's why I love I love the Holy Spirit. Like He is so real. Like you know, He just begins to reveal things as as when you become open to Him and to receiving from Him. There's nothing, and the Bible did, did mention that he is our helper, right? You know, he, he helps us in all things. And this is one of those cases where you need freedom. The spirit of God is able to help you. Um, so, yeah, the Holy Spirit is, I say the Holy Spirit is key, is a, a big key to, to freedom. So. Absolutely. I love how you mentioned, you know, going back to your fathers and your forefathers. So I think there's a spiritual principle there with, the generational line mm -hmm. um, things that can kind of go through the generational lines can you talk a little bit more about that correct yeah so there are some things that you know can be passed down from generation to generation um for, for example you have people when i don't know why we keep going back to sickness maybe there is something the Holy spirit wants us to handle on this on this call um but sometimes people suffer from different sicknesses and they'll tell you oh my father had it you know, my grandpa had it, my, my great grandpa, they had it. So, you know, some people will tell you, I've had stories where, you know, people, some people die at age 40, maybe their dad died at age 40, and they are so scared that they also might die at age 40. So the thing right there is, obviously in that case, there is a generational thing going on there that that individual needs to address. Um, again, and it falls back to doing a root cause analysis and knowing, okay, when did this stuff start? So in, in some cases, it's recommended that you, you know, you kind of ask questions. Uh, maybe you have a grandpa or a, a grandparent that is still living, and they might be privileged to information from, you know, back in the day. Um, so you can, you can ask them questions like, okay, what happened in the past? You know, is that something like some kind of religion was practiced by my forefathers that I had no clue of. Now just begin to ask questions and, you know, you begin to get information as to what happened. You know, in the case of, you know, you know the, the person who, who, who believed they will die at age 40 because they are, their dad died at age 40 and maybe their grandpa died. You know, you ask questions as to what, what started that. You know, was it some kind of, you know, curse that was placed on the family? You know, and I know a lot of people don't believe in these things, but I think in some cases, when you look, I, I, I always ask people, like, look at your life. If what you see in your life is contrary to a blessing, if you can say, okay, this sickness, obviously this sickness is not a blessing, then what's contrary to a blessing? Uh, something contrary to a blessing is a curse, and you have to get rid of it. And thank God. And that's why I always get excited. Thank God for the mighty tools in God. God has given us some amazing tool to break, to break those curses or to pull down those ungodly strongholds or to do all those things. I call them mighty tools. We have them. But we have to learn. You know, we have to learn how to use those tools because they are there. But unless you use them, you, you, don't, you don't know that they are there. So, but thank God. You know, thank us for those tools, you know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I think that it is important to, to ask questions. I love keep having all my bases covered. So I will 100%, you know, seek the Lord and ask questions and go back through the family line, clean it up. I call it spiritual cleaning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> family <laughs> line. Um, but I also like to collaborate and make practical choices. Different. Right. Choices. That's so true. You know, my actions, whether yes. it's my style, whether it's my word choice you know, making those practical choices too that are different. But there, I do believe in the spiritual cleansing in the family line. You know, Correct. Yeah. Talk about, you know, visitation upon the second and third generation and then the blessing for a thousand generations. So there absolutely is. And I love that God said that the blessing is for a thousand generations. A thousand generations, awesome. Pointed out to me that we haven't even had a thousand generations yet. <laughs> <laughs> so God's blessings are eternal and uh, far go beyond far any curse that would that's so true but that's we so just true. need to cleanse <laughs> so 
Um, but yeah, so you do. Ha so you talked a, a bit about a, your book. Can you tell us where we can find your book? Correct. So my book is called The Freedom Experience, and you can find it on Amazon. You know, just go on there, type in my name, uh, look for The Freedom Experience, and you'll find it. You can also find a link to, to buy the book on my website. Um, as you can see, my full name. Oh, thank you. Uh, PatrickDiova.com. You can get more information and a place to buy the book. Yes, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, check out Patrick's book. You can go to Amazon, you can go to the website at Patrick Jayoba, which is P A T R C I C K J A I Y E O B A dot com. For those who are just listening to the audio, uh, have a wonderful day. And let's not forget to tune into our thoughts to make sure they sound like Jesus's, to make sure they sound like freedom. Be blessed. Yes. All right. Bye.